I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a video on thermodynamics. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm Professor of Organic Chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of Orgoman products and the Death Destroyer book. I want to go over a question involving the Delta G with you. For the DAT, you want to make sure you know that the Delta G is called the Gibbs Free Energy. It's the amount of energy that's available to do useful work. Anytime you want to see if a reaction is spontaneous, this is the parameter that you want to look for. You want to look for a negative delta G. So come around and let's have a look at what I have for you. I want to know at what temperature does the delta G become zero for this reaction? Now, if you remember, when the delta G is zero, it means we're in equilibrium. We're going to take a look at calcium carbonate. And what it's going to do, it's going to break apart into calcium oxide and CO2 gas. And I gave you the values of the delta H, which is in kilojoules per mole. This is the delta H of each one. And I gave you the delta S or the entropy in kilojoules per mole Kelvin. Now for the DAT exam, you want to make sure that this unit is the same as this. So if this was in joules, you want to make sure that they're either both in joules or both in kilojoules. Here, I was nice to you, I gave it to you in kilojoules, so you gotta be careful. So the first thing that you would simply do is to write the formula, delta G is delta H minus T delta S. And you wanna set the delta G equal to zero because that's the equilibrium position. Now remember, the delta G is equal to zero at any equilibrium point, whether it's a boiling point or a freezing point or a melting point, a sublimation point, the delta G is zero. So when I put that in and I bring the T delta S to the other side and divide it through, we get the formula T equals delta H over delta S. But notice I wasn't so nice. I didn't just give you the delta H and the delta S. I'm going to make you work for it. So let's go to the other board and let's finish out the calculation. The delta H we're going to have to work for. The delta H is equal to the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. For the DAT, the numbers will be much nicer. So just relax and watch how I do it. You're going to take the products minus the reactants. And when you plug it in, you get 178.3 kilojoules per mole. You do the same thing for the delta S, which is the entropy or the amount of disorder. It's the products minus the reactants. We plug them in and we get a value. And then we simply plug those numbers in and we get 1,111 Kelvin. Now, I want you to make sure we understand what just happened. Since the delta H was positive and the delta S was positive, that means the reaction can only occur spontaneous at high temperatures. So the question is, how high? Above the equilibrium point. So as you can see, um, if the H's are both positive, you find the value of the equilibrium temperature, and if you're above that. If the delta H was negative and the S was negative, and you found the equilibrium temperature, then the reaction is spontaneous only at low temperatures. And finally, if you ever see a negative delta H and a positive delta S, that means the reaction will be spontaneous at all temperatures. And that's the favorite type of question you're going to see on the dot. I hope this gave you a good understanding of how to do elementary thermodynamics that you need for the DAT exam. You got any questions? See me on the study group on Facebook. Good day to you.